Hey there, Erevan here again with a breakdown for the all-new CB9 Explosive Crossbow. This weapon has a lot to live up to appearing all the way on page 3 of the Democratic Detonation War Bond, having to follow up after the devastating performance from the R36 Eruptor. But how strong is it really? Let's take a look at its technical specifications, target effectiveness, and damage breakpoints to find out. As always, before we get started, all testing thoughts and opinions brought to you from the perspective of playing Difficulty 9 Helldive, bringing you the most accurate information on how these weapons perform on the game's highest difficulty setting. This weapon is a repeating crossbow that fires bolts, which seem to have their bodies made up of a vial containing what looks to be the fictional substance known as red mercury, but acts as the very real primary explosive known as mercury fulminate which is commonly used to trigger other explosives in the form of percussion caps or detonators due to its high sensitivity to friction, heat, and shock, acting instead with its own high degree of explosive force. This bolt is extremely heavy though, as the velocity and bolt drop-off is extremely bad, requiring you to aim well above the target, even from as little as 10 meters away, progressively falling off in greater amounts at further distances falling by roughly 2 meters after just 50 meters of travel, or 10 meters by the time it reaches 100 meters of travel. The velocity is also extremely slow, the slowest traveling projectile in the game by a sizable margin. The combination of these two factors makes aiming this weapon a challenge all on its own. A challenge that is assisted in almost no way by your red dot it comes equipped with, as the visual of the dot is never where your bolt will land, unless you're basically point blank. You can expect your shots to land about halfway down the reticle by 30 meters of travel time and all the way at the tip of your front sight by the time it's traveled 65 meters. All the while, you'll need to be leading these shots to account for the low projectile velocity. This red dot comes with no variable zoom levels as well, unfortunately, bringing your total options when holding the reload button for utilities to a resounding zero. All of this extra effort is rewarded relatively well though, as the bolt explodes on impact, dealing damage to anything within 8 meters of where it lands, or again within a 16 meter diameter sphere around the impact site. Just like with the Eruptor, this explosion deals roughly 20% to 33% of its damage in the outer 2 meters of the blast zone, however unlike the Eruptor, the inner 6 meters seems to deal the full damage straight up with no gradual buildup whatsoever. This makes this crossbow even more likely to cause your own democratic detonation involuntarily as any bolts landing within 8 meters will damage and ragdoll you, while any bolts landing within 6 meters of you will reduce your Helldiver to an instant terminated happy meal. Wearing an armor set with a fortified passive for its 50% explosive damage resistance, or wearing the SH-36 shield generator pack to nullify the damage and ragdoll effect will go a long way to preventing this from occurring these being even more useful than with the Eruptor due to you firing generally more shots with its higher rate of fire, able to loose a bolt roughly once per second. The damage of the weapon is also actually accurate this time, dealing a total of 420 damage. However, 250 of this damage is the projectile itself, the bolt, while 170 of the damage is the explosive area of effect around it. This explosive damage being more than enough to put every minor enemy in the game to rest on its own, makes this both a very powerful precision weapon, as well as a strong chaff clear. More on that later though. There is thankfully no maximum range before detonation this time, but you are unlikely to be taking shots beyond 125 meters with this thing regardless. We also have no punch through power here, unable to destroy objects in the environment such as cargo doors, or pierce through enemies. But hey, at least we're able to fire through the chain link fences, and the explosive radius more than makes up for the lack of through and through kill potential. One of the most important features of this weapon, especially for my playstyle, is the fact the firing of the bolt itself is entirely inaudible to the enemy, while the explosion where the bolt lands, whether that be in an enemy or off in the terrain outside an outpost somewhere, will force all nearby enemies within roughly 50 meters of this explosion to rush over to investigate the disturbance. This can be great for forcing enemies out of your way while you pretend to be Sam Fisher, or for eliminating lone guards without provoking a reinforcement call. Keep in mind though that although your weapon is silent, the enemy is not blind. If they see an ally get stricken down right in front of them, they may engage you regardless, call for reinforcements, or begin firing at where they believe you are without becoming fully alerted. Also, any enemy who is not instantly eliminated by a bolt from this weapon will become alerted, spreading that status to all its nearby allies, making it important to be very accurate with your shots as well. So while a weapon like this is an asset to stealth gameplay, it is by no means an automatic win, 
and must be applied well. The sway speed of the weapon is pretty responsive for once, something that was beginning to feel like a little bit of a luxury with our weapons as of late. Stagger-wise, there is some stagger here, but not enough to stop enemy attacks, only enough to cause them a momentary flinch. So watch out for those wrist rockets in between your shots, and don't expect your bolts to prevent retaliation, although it will slow up their path towards you a little bit. The clips, at least, they look like clips, and yes, I know the difference between a clip and a magazine, holds five bolts each. You receive up to 12 clips in reserve, regaining three clips from a field crate and six from a resupply. With the explosive radius able to handle trash enemy clearing reasonably well, and the bolts themselves able to take out medium targets in just a few shots, the ammo economy, with its total of 65 bolts, feels pretty solid on this weapon. Unlike with the magazine-fed weapons of Helldivers 2, there is no difference in your reloading speed when loading on empty or one from empty, so no need to pay strict attention to it like with the rapid reload you get with the Eruptor. You can, however, still reload one shot from empty without wasting a bolt, as you'll then have six bolts loaded afterwards. To finish this up, let's talk about the weapon's penetration level, as Arrowhead seems to have forgotten to. The exploding crossbow bolts seem to sport medium penetration, the same as, say, the Jar 5 or Eruptor does. However, its explosions seem to be less potent against armor than the Eruptor or Scorcher's explosions. This makes it particularly less effective against the heavier set of enemies comparatively to the Eruptor, but otherwise maintains the same large pool of targets it's effective against. Which is great! What's not so great, though, is, due to this explosive difference, the crossbow is unable to close fabricators or nests, which is a shame but understandable as it's a very powerful utility to just be handing out to primaries. Now that we've established our penetration value and gone over all the technical specs, let's get into the all-important target effectiveness and damage breakpoints, starting with the automatons. Light bots are taken out with very little effort by this weapon, being taken down when a bolt lands anywhere within 6 meters of them, making our 5 bolts go a long way when facing off with groups of them. In similar fashion, the striders go down from just the explosion should it reach the rider. The only area you want to avoid impacting here is the upper and lower plates of the ATAT -AT itself. The explosion isn't quite large enough to make it through to the rider from those angles, so aim high on the plate, at the legs, or at the ground below them to turn these guys into a kill streak. Heavy and Rocket Devastators, being more or less the benchmark for our primary effectiveness in the Automaton faction, go down in three bolts to the legs, three or four bolts to the torso, or just one well-placed bolt to the head. Easier said than done on the headshot, though. This one takes some serious practice to hit at range. On another pleasant note, though, the bolts do not ricochet off the Heavy Devastator's shield, causing him damage through it with that 170 explosive damage. Not a way you want to go about bringing these guys down, but... Very cool to see something take on that sheet metal and win in any capacity. Berserkers, a normally rather tanky adversary for most weapons, can be brought down in 2-3 to three bolts anywhere but the arms, or with one extremely difficult headshot. The stagger is also a bit of a deterrent here for the groups advanced towards you, but be prepared to kite these out as needed, as allowing them within 6 meters of you will have an explosive consequence. Gunships are just a uh, no. Fighting with this thing's projectile drop and velocity to land shots on evasive gunships that float 100 meters in the air is just straight up painful. Be prepared to spend a few clips hitting a thruster here with your global elite level aim or swap weapons for these. Tanks and cannon turrets are also a bit of a no-go. I spammed about 25 bolts into the sink of a tank before giving up on it and got similar results with a cannon turret, only showing visible damage after about 35 bolts. You can thankfully still take these out with a quasar and two bolts to the sink afterwards, but generally be prepared to swap weapons to deal with these threats. Hulks take no damage from the crossbow anywhere but the heat sink on the back. This is destroyed though in three bolts, leaving them to bleed out shortly after. Unfortunately, it will not be often a Hulk allows you those three seconds you need to get those three bolts out, meaning for the vast majority of situations, you'll need to use your support weapon or stratagems for these. Still have not seen a factory strider in my games, even once since they were added, and given everything I know about them from secondhand accounts though, I would go out on a limb and say the explosive crossbow is not the weapon you want for taking these down. If I'm wrong though, feel free to mention how this weapon interacts with them in the comments down below. Alright, that's all the automatons, so let's move on to the terminids. As we spoke about earlier, I'm going to advocate for your usage of either the personal shield pack or fortified armor passive when using this weapon against this faction, as you will very often find yourself in situations where the bugs have crawled up too close to utilize this weapon safely. 
A bit of contingency for this scenario in the form of these options will likely make your experience utilizing the explosive crossbow much, much more pleasant. With that out of the way, though, let's get into it. Scavengers or hunters are turned to pace by the explosion alone, not requiring any direct contact with the bolt at all. This is very convenient considering the high density these enemies appear in. Hunters, though, do have a tendency to get too close to safely fire the crossbow, however, requiring you to swap weapons, use stuns, or take your free shot with the personal shield generator you brought pretty often. Warriors are able to survive just one explosion, but not two, falling instantly should a bolt land in them directly. Overall, real easy target to take out with very little commitment. Hive guards are easily dealt with with either two shots in the lower front plate or three shots anywhere across their body. They'll also go down as part of the swarm you fire into with just about four nearby explosions. Brood commanders are quite durable when it comes to the crossbow, taking three clean headshots to take down or five shots across their body otherwise. Not sure what's going on with the brood commanders and the explosive weapons lately, but this is pretty weird. Vile spewers and nursing spewers are easily dealt with by this weapon, falling to as little as two shots to the head or two to four shots on their backsides each. Taking out a field of these with the crossbow with the explosion alone is also very satisfying. Stalkers are a pain point for this weapon. They close the gap quick, disabling your ability to use the crossbow safely. If you can catch them before they reach you, they're taken down in three shots across the body or one very lucky headshot. They'll also be staggered with each hit, momentarily halting their advance. Not the worst performance on this enemy, but far from the best. Probably going to be switching to your secondary, support weapon, or using some stun grenades here. Shriekers are not a great target. The ergonomics and velocity of the weapon make hitting them very difficult, although they will go down in just one direct hit. Best to take out their nest with some long-range AT so you don't have to deal with them, as the crossbow will deal zero damage to those nests. Chargers are actually not bad. They can be eliminated in as little as five bolts to their weak point. While you can damage the back of the legs, as we talk about every video, this isn't a great target when any amount of motion is involved due to your projectile velocity. Personally, I'd always take the easier target or use my support weapon here. Bile Titans are a no. You can break their stomach open in as little as two shots, but unless they've sustained serious injury, the crossbow deals them no damage otherwise. Gonna need to pull out your support weapon or stratagems for this guy. Alright, that covers everything there is to know about the CB9 explosive crossbow. But how good is it? Well, in my opinion, this weapon is somewhere between niche and mediocre. The velocity and projectile drop on this weapon are going to be absolute killers for the vast majority. Not to mention the completely useless optic. Learning where to aim to actually hit your target with this thing is only possible through trial and error, which feels horrendous. It doesn't quite have the firepower of the Eruptor, even though it does have that high rate of fire, which is a plus, and comparatively cannot close any nests or fabricators, which is a pretty big missing utility there when you compare the two. The damage breakpoints also feel just a bit off on some key targets you'd really like to send just one less bolt at to handle, and the lack of clear on those heat sinks for the turrets and the tanks is also a sorely missed utility for me. On the bright side, however, this weapon has excellent saturation and top-tier damage, make no mistake. If the Eruptor was nerfed tomorrow, I would probably bump this up in my mind from mediocre to strong on that alone. It's only living in the Eruptor's shadow that causes it to feel so mid, really. The true utility of this weapon, however, lies in its stealth viability, not only having a muted sound profile, but having the ability to bait enemies away with its explosive endpoint makes it a great primary weapon for stealth gameplay, one I'll be using for this purpose in many battles to come for Galactic Supremacy. Thank you for watching till the end, and have a wonderful day. See you next time. And now, another helpful tip from General Brash. Eravin has brought us much needed insight into the inner workings of the new explosive crossbow. For his efforts, I'm ordering all active Helldivers to like, comment, and subscribe to his channel. Failure to do so will result in the projectile drop of your crossbow being increased. Brass tactics. Use them or die trying.